Hello. A key theme of this channel is to explore the question of how we can develop a culture of healthy public discussion. And Julia Galef's book, The Scout Mindset, introduces some really useful ideas for this question. And she uses them to encourage us to see things as they are and not just how we wish them to be. So this video is going to be a brief review of some of the key ideas in The Scout Mindset. The major idea of the book is to contrast what Galef calls the soldier mindset of people who defend their position against all attack versus the scout mindset that goes out into the world to try to get a good sense of the lay of the land. While a scout is not a detailed cartographer, the value of a scout's mission is intimately linked to bringing back a truthful impression of the terrain ahead. But Galef does much more than provide this evocative metaphor. She explores why the soldier mindset is so prevalent and indeed at times useful before making the argument for why the scout mindset is the more healthy and effective approach to be taking. And I'll go over some of these arguments in a moment. But before that, I just want to note that one of the things that I really liked about this book and Galef's core idea is how well it demonstrates the power of a good metaphor to rapidly illustrate an idea in a very compelling way. Describing the common defensive approach to arguments as being the soldier mindset builds naturally on top of much of our existing metaphorical language that we use about arguments, such as that we are defending a position, or that we're attacking their argument, or that he was holding his ground in the debate. This is the argument as war metaphor that Lakoff and Johnson identify in their excellent book, Metaphors We Live By. By then adding the scout metaphor into the mix, Galef doesn't undermine this widely used metaphorical language, but nicely extends it by bringing in the question of how honest truth-seeking fits into the picture. And this builds on our common knowledge that to be a useful, effective scout, scouts have to honestly convey back to base whatever they have found out about the lay of the land ahead, irrespective of whether it's good or bad news compared to what their commanders hoped for. So this effective use of metaphors makes Galef's core idea easy to understand and very compelling. But Galef doesn't just assume that we know everything that she means by these metaphors. In particular, Galef dedicates a chapter to showing why the motivated reasoning of the soldier mindset is so common and why, in some circumstances, it may be an appropriate stance to be taking. In particular, she explores a number of slightly different functions that motivated reasoning can serve. For example, it can help protect a belief that comforts us in some way. Or it can be useful when building morale to do a hard and risky task by focusing on the positives and putting aside any areas of potential concern. But one of the most common functions of motivated reasoning is when we are using it to help bolster our sense of belonging to a group who all share a common set of beliefs. We often prioritize fitting in over seeking the truth of the matter. And this kind of tribalism in our choices of beliefs and how we argue for them seems to be a key problem damaging the health of our public discussions. And this very much links to the idea of there being dialects of reason that I've explored in other videos. When Galef then explores further the idea of the scout mindset, what is nice to see is how she doesn't just state that we should use it simply because Unlike the defensive soldier, the scout is actively seeking the truth. Rather, Galef acknowledges the psychological and social functions that people are getting from using the soldier mindset. And then she argues that these same functions can actually be achieved better with a more open and inquisitive scout mindset. For example, she explores the myth that people are only persuaded by speakers who are confident in their views, people who show no room for doubt. But the notion of confidence can be split into two parts, social confidence and epistemological confidence, confidence in what is true. Galef shows that there are plenty of examples where it is clearly the social confidence of the speaker that is doing the work of persuasion. 
One example that Galef talks about is how Jeff Bezos used to say to early potential investors in Amazon that there was a 70% chance that Amazon would fail and they'd lose all of their money. That's hardly an expression of confidence in the future of his company. And yet, Bezos had a plausible plan and an infectious amount of self-confidence, and these were enough to get sufficient investors on board to help fund Amazon through its early growth without the need for Bezos to be deceitful about its chances of success. And indeed, in many situations, there are advantages of being open about the levels of uncertainty while actively seeking the truth, especially if you can explain clearly why it is difficult or impossible for anyone to have certainty around a particular issue. Not only does this help build trust, but it also prepares other people for the inevitable twists and turns that will happen in your understanding as you learn more. In contrast, false claims of certainty may look confident to start with, but will either look like hubris or straightforward deceit if your views rapidly keep changing while you learn more. And this links to another theme of Galef's book, the relation between our beliefs and our identity. If we base our sense of who we are on the fact that we hold a particular belief to be true, this can make any critical discussion of that belief feel like a personal attack. And so it's no wonder that we often respond with a defensive soldier mindset. But Galef also recognizes that it can be socially awkward to keep a gap between these two. She gives the example of herself a number of years ago, briefly trying to make the distinction between being a vegan and being a person who doesn't eat eggs or dairy or meat. But it was just too onerous to keep up that distinction, especially when other people around her would simply refer to her as a vegan. So Galef's suggestion is that we try to hold our identities lightly as a set of potentially temporary identifiers for what we currently believe to be true, rather than seeing them as a proud core of our being. This in turn should allow us to spend more time in the scout mindset, openly engaging in discussions with others, updating our beliefs as we explore together how the world really is, rather than just seeing it how we'd like it to be. I really enjoyed this book, and indeed Galef's style and positive attitude. One minor quibble that I have with the book is that some readers might get the impression that Galef is suggesting that if we only were all using the Scout mindset, then we'd all be seeing the world as it really is, and so we'd all obviously be agreeing with each other. Sadly, I don't think it's that simple. As I've explained in my videos about portfolism, even if everyone was trying hard to stay in a scout style of mindset, there would still be many genuine, honest disagreements about how best to understand the world. And some of these views would be passionately held given the potential consequences of who is right and who's wrong. But trying to always adopt the scout mindset is clearly the first step towards us having healthy public discussions. And maybe portfolism can suggest the next step. I hope this review was useful, and please click on the like button below or subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more book reviews like this. And please comment below, particularly if you've also read the book, as I'd be very curious to hear what you thought of it. Thank you for watching.